Don't tell your mother Kiss one another Die for each other We're cold for the summer so, in the great illustrious news that concerns the freaking proud and narcissistic and dim-witted Ben Carson, apparently he spoke in front of a crowd of about 12,000 people the other day in which he basically claimed that we, uh, that we need to seal our borders, not but in a interesting thing that separates him from the Republicans is that he's not just focusing on the Mexican border. He's actually talking about sealing off the Canadian border, the Pacific border, the Atlantic border. Essentially, basically, forming a great wall of America, essentially, around, well, the entire perimeter of America. So, essentially what separates this is that he's not just talking about sealing us off from uh, keeping the Mexicans out, he's essentially talking about sealing us in. And Tim, and here's a part where I will actually say I agree with Ben Carson, or at least I will say I will agree when it comes down to certain things. I mean, I've always said that if we are going to seal, you know, basically seal off America, then we might as well seal off the, all of our all of our borders, and being the Canadian border and our maritime borders. But the problem with and so I, that's why I could, I from a Marxist standpoint. I would agree with the Republican person on this. But the only reason I say that is because I say that out of, well, one, out of sarcasm, and two, out of the whole fact that it's the idea that if you're just sealing off one border, you're basically saying that you're discriminating against an entire group of people, and you're not just trying to, you know, but by, you know, putting up a, a wall uh, uh, by, uh, you know, across the U.S.-Canadian border as well, then you're keeping that immigration out because let's be honest people immigrate from Canada too and people also you know come in through the maritime borders but it's also one of those things that you know he also forgets then we have people that come in by aircraft so it there's a lot of you know logical you know flaws that come with a lot of this and if we really look at the whole idea of it anyway if you put up about 7,500 miles of fencing, you know, essentially because that's how much it's going to encompass, um, including the 5,500 of our, um, you know, our areas along, you know, the 5,500 miles along our frontiers with Canada, then the border would not even, would still not be nearly as secure as basically the GOP tries to perpetrate. In fact, it really... Uh, has this has quite the contrary effect when you consider that uh, residents from 38 counties are allowed to enter the United States as tourists, and without and they get to enter this the U.S. without a visa. Millions more uh, come here on temporary visas or for work or for school, and a lot a lot of times they often come here and they stay. So basically, 40 percent of the current illegal immigration population of the United States actually has arrived here legally. So to try to create this Berlin style, uh, the Berlin Wall style mentality of sealing off America's borders, uh, you essentially uh, have, would have to not only, you basically close off America not only to any meaning, uh, meaningful sense of to the outside world, but you'd also have to eliminate the visa waiver program. This would only this would only cripple the U.S. tourism industry, and it would restrict Americans' uh, freedom of movement. You know, there's a lot of talk about you know being able to you know keep you know keep the immigrants out and blah blah blah. But the problem is, is by keeping immigrants out and by for, you know creating these tougher sanctions towards immigration. You're alienating not only the, you know, these different groups of people, you're kind of basically pulling a China versus Mongolia thing where you're not only keeping your, you know, your, enemy, your enemies out, but you're keeping, you're basically forcing and keeping your citizens in. And that is essentially one of the biggest flaws that the right wing and a lot of um, 
people when it comes down to illegal immigration don't really tend to think about and it's the fact that you're sealing America off from the outside world and and basically isolating us further from the rest of the world and all it's really going to do is prevent our freedom of movement now I can understand this coming from Ben Carson and the likes of the right because you know their typical thing is to basically make America one big large prison keep all the one you know the people that they don't want uh, out of the country so keep you know the the Arabs and the Latinos keep them out of our country and have it be you know one big you know country full you know full of white people and black people but probably where white people still have the privilege and basically it's a prison camp fascist regime blah 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 and coming from people that are fascists like Ben Carson I can understand that sort of mentality and that's essentially where they're kind of going with this whole scenario of trying to seal the country off so yes it would it would horribly affect our tourism industry it would crip that which would you know really be a, put a dent in our economy because America draws in a lot of tourism um, in New York, LA, San Francisco, New Orleans, Miami, you know, Chicago, you know, a lot of different places, Vegas. So, you know, our large cities, they draw in a lot of tourism, and people come here from other countries for a lot of different reasons. And it's not just for tourism, they come here for work and school, and they play a vital role in our economy. As much as the right wing doesn't want to acknowledge it, they play a vital role in our economy. And that's why I've also mentioned the whole fact that immigration plays a role in about a third of California's economy. And if you take away that, then basically California will go right back to where it was a few years ago and be belly up. And it's kind of a, is a slap in the face to a state that not only holds a lot of political power, but holds the rights to 40% of the entertainment industry. Uh, is pretty big when it comes to alternative energy, is the second largest producer of uh, cattle farms, um, just, you know, and, you know, and basically meat production, and is also the leading place when it comes to science and technology, predominantly when it comes down to what you look at at Silicon Valley and the, you know, infrastructure that is the internet and well our computer technology and the only thing that really can rival that although I wouldn't even say rival because it's laughable is the people at MIT no offense if you're from MIT but it's really that whole thing that Californians play a large role in the, the American economy much more than many people are willing to acknowledge and the fact that we are so sorely underestimated and underappreciated is really quite sad and insulting. So, you know, I mean, if we actually broke California off from the rest of the country and it became its own country, it would probably be the tenth largest economy in the entire world. And frankly, if we did break off, we would probably be a bit sore for a bit, but we would bounce, we would end up bouncing back and really becoming pretty, pretty good. The only problem we would had we would probably have would be water, but um, but the United States itself would suffer for it. As much as I am an, a, a you know a supporter of California independence, if we look at it as a realist perspective as it is right now. If California broke free tomorrow from the United States, we would both suffer in different ways, but the U.S. would suffer far more. So it really comes down to that whole thing that you probably shouldn't fuck with us. But anyway, all of that aside, it's the whole fact that Ben Carson and people like this don't tend to understand that our infrastructure, that our infrastructure, our economies, you know, a lot of things play a role and are tied in with immigration. And if you take away that factor and make it harder for people to get in and out of this country then it's really makes it you know then it kind of really is striking a blow at the heart of not only the national economy but in 
as I explained with California, even state economies. So it's not exactly a very smart idea. And as um, and as this article that I have on here from Reason.com said, you would in short have to build a police state, and that is essentially again what I've said that Ben Carson and the right wing is kind of chugging along to. Ben Carson's idea is to basically seal off the country and make it a prison and make it an essential fascist police state. And if and essentially sealing off the country would make it, you know, keep us isolated and, well, frankly, would make us look hypocritical, and, you know, on the face of the world because, you know, these are also the same accusations that the U.S. makes about North Korea. So... You know, it, it really does kind of uh, make you think a little bit. And so, what I also find uh, interesting is that he, uh, Carson goes on to state that we can use a whole series of things to do that. Not just fences and walls, but electronic surveillance, drones, and many of the techniques that are used to keep people out of top secret places. So, basically, again, Carson is, uh, he's not really specifying his border, uh, you know his border plans, but it seems to imply that drones uh, and more mass surveillance than we already have, probably through the use of the Patriot Act, the NDAA, and the uh, NDRP, uh, basically do use these channels to essentially keep American civilians under watch, under guard, and essentially trapped inside their own their own country. And that pretty much anybody that speaks out against the, you know, this sort of thing is an American, and therefore is, you know, ju you know, you know, must must be shot. <laughs> so essentially, again, he's pandering this very fascist agenda. And I mean, really, could we expect nothing more out of Ben Carson or any member of the right wing? Frankly, it just it doesn't surprise me. Um, and then he also goes on about uh, there are radical jihadists who want to destroy us and our way of life and we have to keep them out um, it's kind of funny you mention the radical jihadists considering that you know, you're actually more likely to face problems domestically from white supremacists than you are from uh, you know, let's say jihadists um, you know, your problem is from white supremacy and neo-nazism and well essentially what you're pandering fascism then you and evangelical Christianity, then you are really from, you know, from radical Islam or Arab people. Um, <laughs> so we have to make it easy, not easy for them to get in here. Well, it's kind of already, yeah, you'd make it harder for them to get in here, but it would also prove the point that more people would probably end up being killed by white supremacism and fascism. <laughs> and so, like I said, it's going to probably more prove my point. Um, so, <laughs> uh, it, it's just so entertaining to read these things. And then, um, so yeah, his whole policy about building a wall, keep, you know, keeping Americans in, you have to understand this would cost like hundreds of millions, of, um, hundreds of, yeah, hundreds of millions, hundreds of billions, probably, even, um, to actually even, to even get this going. In fact, um, Customs and Border Protection have already shelled out more than 360 million on non-lethal border drones and other devices. So you are talking hundreds of millions, if not even billions, even hundreds of billions, into trying just to keep America basically locked in. So, you know, in fact, just building the wall itself would cost hundreds of billions of dollars. So, the whole idea then that you would then be tacking on probably another several, you know, several hundred million to even several billion dollars to maintain all this is quite asinine. I mean, n number one, you're dwindling the economy away by doing this anyway, hurting the economy and hurting the state economies. And then you're basically wanting to spend an, er just an erroneous amount of money trying to keep people in. It doesn't make sense, and it wouldn't work. 
I mean, financially, fiscally, this is just a bad plan all the way around, even for a Republican. Um, and so it, it's things like this that are definitely a concern to think about and definitely just one, one of several things to point out. One of the other things I wanted to point out was the fact that uh, Ben Carson was uh, recently uh, speaking uh, at a town hall event at the University of New Hampshire in, uh, Durham, uh, in uh, Durham. And he was basically saying that uh, he, he, he is... He essentially basically has said that he doesn't believe in uh, evolution or climate change and... Um, and but uh, and yet at the same time he also has expressed that he doesn't even know uh, how gravity works. And you have to understand that these are people that are. This is a man who is a fucking neurosurgeon. Yes, he is technically a scientist, but he's a neurosurgeon. Anyway, so when asked by. Um, by a man in the audience that you don't believe in evolution or climate change, uh, do you believe that climate change is happening? Carson replies, is there climate change? Of course there's climate change. Any point in time, temperatures are going up or temperatures are going down. Of course that's happening. When that stops happening, that's when we're in big trouble. As far as evolution is concerned, you know, I don't believe in microevolution or natural selection, but I believe that God gave the creatures he made the ability to adapt to their environment. Because he's very smart and he didn't want to start over 50, uh, every 50 years. Uh, shortly afterwards, with all the wisdom of magnets, how do they work, the question of gravity itself came up. And he said, just the way the Earth rotates on its axis, how far away it is from the sun, these are all very complex things. Uh, gravity, well, where did it come from? I mean, there are so many things. Um, but um, essentially what he ends up figuring out... Um, is that the the he's said by but they are all welcome to believe whatever they want to believe I'm welcome to believe what I want to believe they say I can't be a scientist and yet somehow I became a neurosurgeon and did pretty pr pretty well uh, uh, but he ends up basically going on this Hitler like rant and he just you know he claims that he claims that climate change you know is just this rise, this natural rising and lowering of temperature, and it's not quite that simple. I mean, this is a man that doesn't even seem to really understand it to the fullest extent, you know. And I don't either. I'm no scientist myself, but the fact that this man has literally, you know, is trying to, you know, is sarcastically trying to discredit climate change and yet can't even understand what fucking gravity is, is really quite embarrassing for a man that professes to be a fucking scientist, much less a neuro, much more a neurosurgeon. I mean, it, it's just very, it, it, it just comes off as very contradictory. And I, I'm, I, to be honest, I'm embarrassed for the man. The fact that he can't, logically form any sort of any sort of consistency with his arguments, whether it's on climate change, whether it's on his pro-life stances, whether it's on his position on border control you know, no matter what it is even his foreign policy fucking his plans for that, the man is just not consistent and it's sad to say but he's worse than how Mitt Romney was in 2012 when it came to the flip-flopping, this man can't form a consist, can't keep a consistent base, and most of his facts are based on well, baseless assertions and straw manning. And of course, this goes for his supporters as well, unfortunately. So, to say that the man is ignorant would be understating it. To say that he's not intelligent would be going too far. But what I would definitely say is the man, and I guess this is his supporters as well, are they're arrogant and they are definitely, but they are, you know, but they are ignorant. They are kind. They don't really seem to, 
know profess to they don't really know as much as they think they know and let's look at it even from a philosophical perspective you know no one knows everything that they think they know in fact that from a philosophical perspective no one you know it's okay and no one knows no one knows what they they all that they really think they know in fact we probably know very little but when it comes down to it it's just kind of sad when this is a man that claims to be a neurosurgeon and then tries to make statements on climate change and doesn't understand it. Of course, I don't expect him to because that's not his foray of expertise. And to be even asking him about that is probably asinine. Um, but it's also the fact that as a scientist, you should be somewhat... Um, knowledgeable on subjects like um, if you are even if you are a neurosurgeon be, just being a scientist a doctor you should be somewhat familiar with how gravity works with climate change and stuff like that and in fact if you were you probably wouldn't be as ignorant to the the statements as you actually are and I love the argument that his supporters give me well he's you know he's a uh, that he because he's a he's a scientist and I do I hate using the word that he's a scientist because he's not really a scientist he's just a neurosurgeon his expertise is on the in the workings of well typically the brain and so to basically say that he's an expert on climate change would really be just quite the uh, it would actually be quite be quite the idiocy of a comment because just because a person claims to be a scientist does not mean that they have a expertise on a certain subject if you're a neurosurgeon I, you know you're an expert you, you typically are an expert on the brain if you're a pediatrician you know yeah but you know if you're a dermatologist you you know you're an expert on skin you're a gynecologist, well, we know what you're an expert in. But um, but at the same time, the ignorance of this man and the fact that he's more politically and religiously motivated would almost suggest that some you know, that he probably doesn't know as much as he thinks he knows. And to be quite fair and be quite blunt, I'm not even gonna be fair, I'm just gonna be blunt. I wouldn't trust him to work on my brain if he was the last neurosurgeon on earth. I'd rather die. And so, yeah, I, I just find it quite interesting this man has the gall to make, to make these statements and just his own rhetoric alone is sometimes even scarier than Trump fear. And Trump fear scares the fuck out of me when he talks. Because both men sound a lot like the man who went around doing this. Enough said. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Peace.